not otherwise uh, as you know i don't like to be just uh, talking on one side monologue i will like that there is some interaction but uh, if there is difficulty then we will omit that so today's uh, topic as you know is uh, non inferiority trials and uh, we are only going to cover the basics and uh, sample size calculation so <clears throat> the, there is a little bit of history to be known about non inferiority trials can you hear me well yes sir yes sir yes, sir. okay uh, one should know that gold standard randomized trial is a superiority trial and that is usually done to show that a given treatment under study is superior to placebo so a placebo controlled superiority hypothesis trials is considered the gold standard because uh, if bias is controlled if it is conducted properly then it gives you clear answer so clear take away from the trial is that a uh, drug is superior to placebo uh, as you will see later on uh, it this type of uh, clear take away is not possible in non uh, other trials so we will come to that later and the problem is if there is a proven efficacious treatment then people are asked questioning that uh, you can't do placebo controlled trials it is not eth not ethical and uh, therefore they started what is called active control trials so placebo is inactive but you use something in place of placebo which is active so even though it is a control group it is a active control group so active control trials where you want to show that a new treatment is similar to or same as a standard treatment as far as its effects are concerned and this thing uh, started in 1982 which people called equivalence trials and some people used uh, uh, words called non inferiority trials which we will come to later in 2010 FDA of USA issued a draft guidance for non inferiority trials and it was finalized in 2016 it is available on internet anybody wants to download and read it's a good document and uh, lengthy but uh, you can read and uh, certainly be wiser about uh, non inferiority trials and the stand of the premise was that not not new treatment is not worse than the active control so we have standard treatment as active control standard because it has already been proven superior to placebo and is standard of care treatment uh, i think people who take annotation that uh, actually stops my slide movement so i will share these slides to you later but uh, please uh, bear with me uh, no annotation please so uh, there is uh, there is a standard treatment which is the active control and new treatment which we want to show is not worse than the active control or standard treatment and this is what is called non inferiority trial and uh, i hope it allows me to move that is the problem here yeah. so typical situation is that you have a drug a which is known to be superior to placebo and is a standard of care treatment because it is a standard of care treatment you cannot do further placebo control trials they are not ethical because you, are, you can't put people without any treatment when standard treatment is available so what is the alternative the alternative which people thought was 
can we show that B, which is the new treatment, is equivalent to A, which is the standard treatment. And it became standard treatment because of previous placebo controlled trials. So, if we can show B is equivalent to A, then we can assume that B is also better than placebo and use this as a treatment. I just remember that when I show you different papers, you will find people using uh, same uh, different terms for control, uh, which is like active control, it may be standard treatment, consort call it reference treatment because the new drug which is compared in the non-inferiority trial is in reference to this treatment, therefore it is called reference treatment. And whatever is term is used, remember, this must have been established as superior to placebo or superior to control group with no treatment. And then only we can use it for non-inferiority trials as active control or standard treatment, also called reference treatment. These, these words are used by different groups of people, uh, you know, interchangeably in the context of non-inferiority trials. Now, what does equivalence mean? Equivalence strictly would mean there is no difference between B, which is the new treatment, and A, which is the standard treatment. So, if we want to say there is no difference, that means we are saying zero difference. And if some of you who have attended my sample size calculation, you remember the formula, which is for 80% power and 5% alpha, 16p, 100 minus p divided by difference square, square of the difference. So, if you say zero difference, then you in the denominator, you get zero, which means sample size will be infinity. So, a complete equivalence of two treatments requires infinite sample size, which means it cannot be established, cannot be uh, really shown uh, with uh, certainty. And uh, that is why whenever we say equivalence, we actually don't mean complete equivalence. Then what do we mean? We mean that new treatment is neither superior nor inferior. And both ways we want to, when we say equivalence, we want to be sure both ways. Neither it should be superior nor inferior. Perhaps we uh, hypothesize it is neither superior nor inferior. That means we want to see both ways, two-sided, also called two-tailed hypothesis or two-tailed hypothesis tests. But since zero difference cannot be shown, then we are, you have to ask how much difference can we ignore, which is plus minus 1%, plus minus 2%, plus minus 5%. How much difference between the standard treatment or reference treatment and the new treatment, which I we have brought to test, how much difference can be ignored? That is what will set, uh, you know, the boundaries. It may be plus 5% to minus 5% and uh, that is why we say neither superior nor inferior. But why not we ask uh, we don't worry so much about superior, but uh, just ask the question that can we say that it is not inferior? So forget about superiority side. We only worry about inferiority. It should not be inferior, so non-inferior. That means we are only talking about one-sided or one-tailed hypothesis. And uh, of course, you can set your p-value, uh, which, is, which is your choice. It may be 5%, it may be 2.5%. But when we are talking of non-inferiority, we don't care if it is superior. Sometimes we care about both. So some trials are there which, which combine superiority or which have two hypotheses. Non-inferiority hypothesis, which they test first. 
and if it is non inferior then test for superiority so they have superiority hypothesis as well but then they will check both ways first one way to establish non inferiority then they will check both ways or they will check again one way for superiority but equivalence will check both ways which means there will be two margins now you may ask why should we go for new treatment if standard treatment is available why should we bother about bringing a new treatment because new treatment may be often better than the reference treatment or standard treatment in other ways it may be better safety profile it may be less expensive it may be more convenient to administer like you may give orally rather than injection or you may give once a day pill rather than you know twice a day or thrice a day it may be easier to comply maybe for various reasons or it may have shorter treatment duration so in tuberculosis trials lot of non inferiority trials have been done we show that such and such regime is non inferior to longer regime which is going on for months and months or sometimes more than a year so shorter treatment duration may be one advantage if you can show non inferiority so these are the reasons why you will be interested to show non inferiority so let's take example in hiv for example we may be seeking for less complicated less toxic regime but with similar efficacy or you may have a generic compound which you want to show as efficacious as some branded compound you may try to show that uh, twice a day is non inferior to th thrice a day or maybe capsule is not inferior to tablet because tablet has a bad taste in the mouth capsule you can swallow and uh, avoid that bad taste in the mouth or you may identify new treatment options in case uh, the bacteria in this case virus develops resistance to the available treatment options so remember these may be reasons why you want to do this now let's take an example and usually we use this type of figure where there is a vertical line and that line is a line of no difference and in terms of difference measure there will be zero at the bottom of the the vertical line if we are comparing a versus placebo which is you know we are trying to do maybe a first trial in this field and we want to show a is better i am not talking about non inferiority right now we are talking about a first time new treatment placebo control trial then if a is better than placebo we usually take experimental uh, group minus placebo means control group because let's say mortality will be less in the experimental group so uh, it the results will come in minus and therefore minus 5% minus 10% minus 15% this may be the extent to which a may be better than placebo so on the left hand side a is better placebo is worse on the right hand side of this vertical line a is worse placebo is better means maybe a is killing people and placebo is not killing people and therefore placebo is actually better that will we will show as plus 5% plus 10% plus 15% which we will show that actually placebo a is increasing the mortality not decreasing the mortality in which case placebo may be better so in this framework let's do a study it is a randomized placebo control trial we are not doing non inferiority trial we are doing a superiority trial in patients with severe covid 19 placebo arm has mortality 100 out of 500 which is 20% and treatment a which was which is the first treatment let's say has mortality 50 out of 500 which is 10% so how are we going to show this there, there is a difference of 10% and i told you experimental treatment which is a minus placebo which is the control treatment is 
is how we generally report. So 10% minus 20% will give us minus 10%. So in the type of figure which I showed to you, you will show something like this. Here there will be a point. That is how we show. But uh, this is only the finding which observed in the circumstances in which you conducted the trial in a, a reasonable sample size like in this case 1000 but this covid has is affecting the whole world and if your treatment is really reducing mortality it will be used in millions of patients so whether this 10% effect will be consistently there all over the world is difficult to accept so if you want to guess what will happen say in different settings in different populations in different variants in different uh, countries you have to take some margin that margin is called confidence interval because it gives you a range within which the true figure the population figure which means what will happen if the whole population was under your study uh, truth may be plus minus on either side so you want to show that as a confidence interval like this so maybe you calculated a confidence interval usually we calculate 95 percent confidence interval so which you got from minus 14 percent to minus six percent which means a is better than placebo is a decreases mortality by what you observed was 10 percent but in truth it may be as high as 14 percent or maybe as low as six percent so if you had entire global population in your hand in the trial you may observe uh, not necessarily 10 percent but you may but you may observe as low as six percent decrease in mortality or as high as 14 percent uh, decrease in uh, mortality with 95 percent certainty or confidence that is what the 95 percent confidence interval is now now we come to non-inferiority and the left hand side now we have a new treatment which is let's say b not a a is established now a is the standard treatment now you want to show that b which is a new treatment is better than a so we will still have the vertical line we will still if we use difference this will be zero at the bottom remember if it is ratio it will be one but uh, let's take zero easy to understand new treatment better on the left side but new treatment is worse than the standard on the right hand side so this is how we will set it up you may set either uh, you may set it in another another way also uh, just the reverse way but uh, conventionally we show that uh, new treatment better on the left hand side like uh, we did for a versus placebo but it is also possible that new treatment is worse which will be on the right hand side now as i said new treatment have some safety or uh, cost advantages so we don't mind if new treatment is slightly worse but how much worse we can accept this is what we have to decide we will accept two percent or three percent or five percent and that is where you will draw this dotted line which is the margin up to which you can accept inferiority beyond this you, you will not accept so you will declare a new treatment as non-inferior if it is not more inferior than the margin which you have set which is the vertical line and dotted line now if you got results like this that means perhaps the new treatment was almost showing no difference with uh, the old treatment a but the confidence interval on either side goes up to this range and as you can see our threshold or our margin is not crossed that means we have a reasonable uh, certainty that and if it is 95% confidence interval 95% certainty that yes new treatment is inferior but not beyond what is acceptable to us not beyond what we set as threshold not beyond what we called 
margin acceptable margin in which case this will be called a non inferior treatment so b is non inferior to a now on the other hand if you get this now your 95% confidence interval has crossed the threshold margin has been crossed so you now you cannot declare this treatment as non inferior if a was the active treatment uh, or standard treatment or reference treatment and b is the new treatment b is not non inferior to a because it is crossing the margin which you have set how to set the margin we'll come to that later on the other hand if your margin was here then even this finding would be non inferior because your margin was not getting crossed so the margin is the key and you have to set the margin in a very justifiable fashion and you must set it before you start the trial after you start the trial you will be tempted to change the margin so that you can declare non inferiority which was your aim therefore pre specification of margin is very important now if you get result like this here was your margin and you got your result between this line of no difference and the margin of course you know that it is it is not crossing non inferiority margin or threshold therefore it is non inferior but because it is certainly worse than uh, the other treatment so it is inferior but non inferior this type of result is not easy to get you need a large sample size study for this so this situation doesn't arise commonly but if uh, you get this uh, result then it is statistically inferior but it is within the acceptable margin so we will call it non inferior so different results you know you can get if this is your line of no difference and this is your margin often denoted by delta they call it delta so if this is the margin or non inferiority margin then depending on what result you get you may have eight different kinds of scenarios first scenario a is clearly on the left hand side of zero means line of no difference so this is a superior new treatment is superior to uh, the whatever treatment you are comparing it to which is the reference treatment new treatment is better than the reference treatment uh, left hand side of this line of uh, no difference we have new treatment better on the right hand side new treatment worse but we have drawn a vertical line which is our margin we say we will accept little bit of worse treatment but not more worse than this and therefore this is our margin or threshold if you get result like b then of course it is not superior because it is crossing the line of no difference but it is not crossing the threshold so it is non inferior there is you can say uh, some possibility that it may be superior but we can't say that from this trial you may have to do another trial to show really superiority on the other hand c is apparently uh, inferior maybe superior but uh, apparently inferior but certainly not crossing the threshold so it is non inferior and the d i have already shown you in the previous slide that it is inferior but since it is within the margin which we have accepted or declared as acceptable so it is non inferior on the other hand e situation we don't know it may be superior it may be non inferior or it may be inferior that's that's why it is inconclusive and even f is inconclusive because it is also less width of confidence interval for the same situation it may be superior it may be inferior uh, or it may be non inferior on the other hand if you get the situation g then it is inferior but we can't say it is uh, non inferior because it is crossing the threshold so it is also inconclusive and h is clearly non -in uh, is inferior because it is uh, beyond the acceptable margin 
of non inferiority and that may be another situation or scenario which you may come up with now that so you have perhaps understood what we want to show in non inferiority trials there are concerns with non inferiority trials that you can understand with uh, a story uh, suppose there are two sisters they want both want to win you know olympic model in boxing you may be remembering some family like this one sister elder sister went to olympic won the gold medal came back and uh, the other sister says i think i am as good as you and father who is also the coach he says why don't we see the boxing between both of you and then he goes and whispers something in the ear of the elder sister and uh, then they engage in boxing and it shows up that younger sister is also as good as older sister now uh, can there be something wrong in this what might have happened anybody can tell me maybe this is as good as elder sister but there may be something else also may be happening anybody wants to say what could have happened a less intense boxing uh, ila says that uh, <laughs> less intense boxing because the elder sister wanted to encourage the younger sister therefore didn't put all the effort and there uh, that may be the reason why younger sister also turned out to be as good as the elder sister another example which i will tell you is suppose there is one antibiotic x which is very good against methicillin resistant staphylococcus now i bring another antibiotic it took me 2 3 years to invent another antibiotic and uh, we uh, sort of claim i claim that my antibiotic y is as good as x now in the meantime so i want to do non inferiority trial between x and y in the meantime the staph aureus has developed resistance to x now what will happen x will not work and my y which is also useless will not work so both will be you know showing certainly non inferiority if not equivalence but the reason would be that situation has changed the sensitivity of the bacteria has changed and therefore i can easily so non inferiority with a useless treatment so these are the concerns so there are three main concerns with non inferiority trial one is is the effect of reference treatment also called active control preserved unlike the elder sister who was boxing but not actually putting all the effort so there was the her boxing effort was not preserved and similarly the my example of antibiotic the antibiotic uh, which was the uh, reference treatment was no more active against the staph staph aureus methicillin resistant staph staph aureus and therefore for me it was easy to show my antibiotic as non inferior and even may show equivalence also so uh, remember preserving the effect of reference treatment is one of the main concern and the second main concern i you must have realized that how do we set the non inferiority margin you know you can set the smaller you can set little bigger you can be still bigger so that is another and third is types of analysis which i will come to later now consider three arm trials three arm trials i am just asking you to consider so that you understand what the problem is in non inferiority trial there are three arms are new treatment reference treatment and placebo now what will happen at the end is you will compare new treatment to placebo reference treatment to placebo and of course new treatment to reference treatment three comparisons are possible so you compare new treatment to placebo new treatment is superior 
you uh, compare reference treatment to placebo, reference treatment is superior, then you compare new treatment to reference treatment and you find that both are similar, equivalent or non-inferior, whatever you say. But if you fail to show superiority of reference treatment also to placebo, means new treatment also not working against placebo, reference treatment also not working against placebo, that means your, your present trial design and conduct of the trial is such that even the, though reference treatment was shown superior in earlier placebo control trial, in this trial it is not showing up. So the trial lacks sensitivity to show that reference treatment is superior. If that is the case, then as we can see, new treatment being similar or, or equivalent to reference doesn't mean anything. And this is a situation when we will say that the trial lacks sensitivity. This is a defect in the trial design or conduct. It is, uh, you know, uh, this, this also is termed uh, assay sensitivity. I think assay word, some people must have brought from immunoassay or something that yes, we are doing some kind of testing. So it is a kind of assay. And if it is not sensitive enough, then both will fail to show superiority over the placebo. This means they are no good, they are as good, as bad as placebo. And therefore, even if both they are equivalent or they are uh, bees, new, ref, uh, new treatment is non-inferior to reference treatment, it doesn't mean anything. Now, this three-arm trial can reveal this situation, can reveal this problem. But if there are two arm trials, new treatment and reference treatment, there is no placebo. Then you have no idea how new treatment compares to placebo. Previous studies have been done. Previous studies have established reference treatment as efficacious. So you have to rely on the previous study to conclude that reference treatment is efficacious and is efficacious in this study also. And on the basis of previous studies, you define what is the non-inferiority margin you will accept. Now, as you can imagine, you are in the dark whether this reference treatment in this trial is working against placebo or not. Is it more effective than placebo or not? And that, uh, you know, dark corner is a room for making inadvertent mistakes. But remember, it can also be a room for manipulations. So, for example, uh, if you ask the question, was effect of reference treatment preserved? Very easy to show non-inferiority for the drug company if you enroll less responsive patient. You know, so the new treatment, uh, reference treatment will be less effective and new treatment, even if less effective than reference treatment, it will show up as non-inferior. You may take more compliant population who will take the drug in contrast to the previous study where reference treatment was shown better than placebo, if more compliant patients are there, it was they were not so compliant in the previous trial, but here you will be, you have opportunity to show it. Decreased intensity and dose of the standard, so standard treatment or reference treatment, you can give less dose, you can give less intensity. Therefore, there will be less effect of the reference treatment, easy to show non-inferiority with the new treatment. Or you take a short follow-up, in long follow-up things get revealed. All of these tricks can be done to show non-inferiority. So how do you check that? You have to check the study design. I will come to that later. Also look at the results in the reference treatment group. Did the patients do as well as they have been done in the previous trials which established this reference treatment sometime earlier in the past so as a standard treatment. So you have to rely on some historical data. That is why non-inferiority trial is often criticized. So for example, you can have different kind of patients, different endpoints, Several things you may change to show non-inferiority when actually they may be uh, new treatment may be inferior.
you can change the endpoints like you see ch change of endpoints is happens with time earlier hiv study used to have death as endpoint when death became less common then they started looking at aids clinical events you know hiv converting into aids and now there are surrogate markers like viral load cd4 count so when endpoints change it becomes sometimes easier to show non inferiority so when you look at non inferiority trial you must examine whether participants in the non inferiority trial are similar to those trials those or trial or trials that establish the efficacy of reference treatment you must look at the interventions any difference between the control intervention in the current trial and the previous trial uh, which was which should have been reported you may find that differences exist because patient management changes with time and i will give some examples to that later so similarly concomitant therapies may also differ so interventions are not exactly the same doses may differ if the dose of reference treatment is reduced it will might have reduced efficacy if it is increased then possibly there will be more side effects so advantages of the new treatment can be overestimated in these situations similarly outcomes or endpoints you can have uh, any uh, difference in outcome measure which you if you look at the trials which establish the efficacy of reference treatment it should be similar it should not be different not that death was outcome in earlier studies and now you have cd4 count timing of evaluation should be different and ideally the those outcomes which are used to establish the efficacy of standard treatment should be the same in the non inferiority trial these things you have to check so what things you have to check patients intervention and outcome so something like pico you should remember now we i come to setting the non inferiority margin how much margin we should set we must do it before starting the trial we may think of doing it in a clinical way saying that look here if uh, there is 1% uh, more mortality in the new treatment because it is less costly we will accept it so let's put it so it is clinicians and patients you can take patients view point you can take clinicians view point you can have expert group you can do delphi method you can do surveys and set based on what people think is given the some advantages of the new treatment how much worse uh, we can accept that is totally clinical but fda has set it in a statistical manner also so for example let's take a is example of comparison of previous trial which was comparing standard treatment with placebo and there is absolute difference in incidence of stroke so you see they found 3% less stroke with standard treatment compared to placebo but 95% confidence interval is from uh, minus 4% to minus 2% so 3 plus minus 1 so standard treatment which was established in a placebo control trial had was better than placebo by at least 2% which means placebo was inferior to standard treatment at least by 2% maybe by 4% we observed 3% but minimum minimum with 95% confidence we can say that placebo was uh, having more stroke uh compared to the standard treatment by at least 2% so one group of people may say that non inferiority uh, means the new treatment should not be uh worse than placebo so let's keep at 2% other people will say oh if it is if it is uh, uh, as if you accept as much inferiority as placebo i think it is not good so let's take 50% of this 2% and 1% should be our margin this is what fda of usa said so you see in the second uh, part which is b non inferiority trials of novel treatment versus a standard treatment this side new treatment is better this side new treatment is worse so how much worse we can accept up to 1% 
So FD of USA said that at least 50% of the effect of standard treatment compared to placebo should be preserved, which means we won't accept worse beyond 1%. Because the new treatment was better by the, from placebo by 2%, we can go up to 1%, which is 50% of uh, the margin or the difference which you have seen between placebo and the standard treatment. So that is the FTA method of uh, setting a margin. Now, as you can imagine, this is totally arbitrary. We have said 50% is totally arbitrary. And uh, there have been many uh, instances of questioning the inferiority margin. And we uh, rely on previous studies. Now, previous studies may have different designs. May have the designs may have changed over time. Clinical practice may have changed over time. Effect of treatment may have changed over time. This is what is called, there is lack of constancy. There may be publication bias also if you have done you have done your NI margin based on a meta-analysis. There is a paper in BMJ Open, uh, which uh, has talked about, this is a 2021 paper, that when we are taking mortality as an outcome, how much margin you will accept? If you go to general people, they will not accept more than 1%. But you, if you see these studies, 3,992, 3 111 articles, reviewed 82 percent of trials were conducted in thrombosis infectious diseases oncology mortality was the sole primary outcome in so all the trials but 79 percent had a composite outcome including mortality and see how much with the non-inferiority margin absolute risk difference median of nine percent some people take took even 10 percent as the margin non-inferiority margin so 10% increase in mortality is uh, acceptable to them. It is okay. Similarly, if you take a relative measure or ratio measure, non-inferiority margin even up to 1.5 and maximum up to 1.7 in interquartile range was acceptable to people. So people set their margin according to what they feel. And that is a major problem. So in this BMJ uh, paper, it says that uh, absolute and relative non-inferiority margins used in public trials are large, allowing conclusion of non-inferiority in the context of large differences in mortality. And this is a major challenge. Uh, one paper looked at uh, when you give non-inferiority margin, you should give supportive evidence on what basis you are saying this. This was available only in 53% of trials. And I will talk to analysis, intention to treat per protocol, only 44% 40, 40, uh, showed that. Whether the effect of previous trial which established the uh, standard treatment was preserved, only 19% showed this. Only 2% of the trials analyzed in this study which came in 2019 met all the criteria. This is the scenario which is frightening. Now, a question about analysis. I think I can ask you this question. This is from an uh, NEGM paper in 1980. Some people may have seen this. Let me simplify the numbers for you. If 2,000 people are randomized, 1,000 take uh, cholesterol lowering drug, 1,000 placebo, 500 comply, 500 don't comply. Those who comply, there is mortality of, I, I can't read it now, 15%, I think. And those who don't, there is 20% mortality which is a uh, statistically significant difference. So if I tell you that, yes, use this cholesterol lowering drug, will you use it? Or you want to know anything more, any qu more question? Anybody wants to ask a question before you start using this cholesterol lowering drug? Yes, sir. What is the question? So question is the why there is so much of non-compliance, whether there was some side effect, whether there was some intolerability. What's the reason that 50% uh, of the patient didn't mm -hmm. comply with the new treatment? It is precaution okay. pathology, sir. So there may be side effects. Some side effects may be there for some people. But uh, what the company is saying is that 
uh, if you tolerate the drug, it is a wonderful drug. Take it. Will you take it? Or will you prescribe it? So Any other question? Yes, yes, Dr. Prakash. So such a high rate of non-compliance, it may mm -hmm. be such a GI intolerance or patient who is taking the new medicine, he might be getting... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So the company will say that you start the drug, if you don't tolerate it, forget mm -hmm. it, but if you tolerate it, take it. This is what we do with many medicines. Okay. Sir. Any other question? Yes, sir. we should see the com uh, we should see the this mot outcome or that is the mortality rate in case of non compliers also. Yes, sir. Yes. Then only that we is, will come to know uh, what is so the intention. I'm giving you. I'm giving you now twenty five percent. And how many it's left? Not yet clear. How but many left have... means? No, no. Everybody has been followed up as far as mortality is concerned. So you can see difference, uh, non-compliers had 25% mortality. Sir, how many did comply versus non-complied in the placebo group? Ah, that's a good question. Compliers had 15% mortality, non-compliers had 25% mortality. So? It hardly matters because we have to see the intention to treat only, no? Ah, so intention to treat means what will you analyze? Only compliers versus compliers or non uh, both Total, compliers, both non compliers, compliers together, right? Both together, yeah. Together, but uh, why not just com uh, compare compliers versus compliers? Because uh, we have to uh, see as per uh, intention to treat what we have planned earlier, we will mm -hmm. go according to that only. Sir, okay, if why? We are... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sir, if we are going to compare compliers versus compliers, we may overestimate the true effect, sir. Mm -hmm. sir or we may. Randomization values may be different because randomization may not have followed the same pattern now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we randomized to make these two groups similar, thousand versus thousand. If you split it, then we don't, uh, we are not sure whether this 500 will be similar to 500. Thousand versus thousand are similar in both known and unknown confounders, as they, we call it. But yeah. that may not be true for 500 versus 500. So that is why intention to treat analysis says all patients must be analyzed by keeping them in the group to which they were randomized, irrespective of whether they took the treatment or not. Now here, non-inferiority trial uh, loves it because suppose nobody takes the treatment, neither standard treatment nor, uh, you know, new treatment, then you are 100% sure there will be equivalence. So non-inferiority trial people or the companies which are doing non inferiority trial, they love intention to treat analysis because non compliance dilutes the effect of the active treatment, active control, or the standard treatment. So, easy to show non inferiority. So, intention to treat analysis is not the only analysis which you will, uh, which you will look at in non inferiority trial. In non inferiority trial, so just to revise, you see this, uh, if you randomize, a whole randomized group is compared, this is intention to treat analysis, but some people don't take the treatment for whatever reason, side effects or whatever. Some take treatment A when they are assigned A, some take treatment B when they are assigned B, some don't take for different reasons. That is called per protocol analysis because they followed the protocol. They did not stop the treatment. They were asked to take A, they took A. They were asked to take B, they took B. So they followed the protocol. This is per protocol analysis. Now this is, this is when, this is where you must check in non-inferiority trial. So uh, if, if they don't take, then it becomes easier for non-inferiority trialists to show non-inferiority. But if you compare those who took it, and you find a different result, that means you should not accept non-inferiority. Non there is another thing called as treated analysis, which means some people may cross from A to B. They were assigned A, but they took B. Some were assigned B, but they took A. In which case, 
you may decide to analyze the way they took the treatment, BB together and AA together. This is called as treated analysis, which is not exactly the same as per protocol analysis. In uh, non-inferiority trials, you must check that both analyses are done. In superiority, intention to treat analysis is conservative. It doesn't overestimate effect. In fact, it underestimates most of the time. In non-inferiority, intention to treat it anti-conservative, it tends to show non-inferiority when it may not be. So there is a study beta blocker versus AC inhibitor in heart failure. 5% was the non-inferiority margin. Outcome was death or hospitalization. 95% CI boundary was up to 4.4% with ITT. But if you did per protocol, it crossed the boundary. It became 5.1%. So it was actually not non-inferior. But if you didn't do per protocol analysis, you may be uh, mistakenly declaring non-inferiority. So this is very important. Uh, there are similar examples, uh, but I'm not going to spend too much time on that. So uh, you can see that uh, both types of analysis are very important. Now, very quickly, uh, I have a few minutes to uh, talk about sample size. Remember the formula we have discussed earlier, 16p into 100 minus p divided by d square. This is for superiority trial, which I have told you. This is for a study with two equal size parallel group. And superiority trial always is two-tailed hypothesis. Therefore, uh, we use 16. Now, if equivalence trial is also two-tailed hypothesis, so equivalence trial should have the same formula. But if you want to do one-tailed hypothesis testing or one-sided uh, confidence interval, then 16 can be replaced by 12. Actual figure is 12.3, but to make it simple, you can take 12. So this is a trial where done in Sierra Leone, where associate clinicians, they are somewhere between nurse and a doctor. They were operating for inguinal hernia and the study was to check whether the recurrence rate of hernia is uh, non-inferior to doctors. So they did a, uh, they had a margin, which is, which was, uh, I think, uh, 5%, 5% was non-inferiority margin and actual recurrence rate, which was already observed in previous trials was 2%. So 2% becomes your P because you expect 2% there, 2% here, but up to a margin of 5% you accept. So if you replace 16 with 12, say 12 P 100 minus P divided by D square, which gives you a sample size of 95 per group. And this is what they had 97 per group. So, but if you, if you this is with P value of 0.05, if you want P value of 0.025, which many people want in non inferiority trial, then 12 again remains 16. So 16 P 100 minus P divided by D square. So remember this, uh, now, I'm not going to give you good news about this, but just to summarize that uh, uh, a good summary is provided by this uh, NEGM paper. People who want to read it, uh, you can note down NEGM 2017, uh, volume 377, page 1357 to 67. And this gives you all the challenges in design and interpretation of non-inferiority trials. I have covered all of them, but just to remember that active control, you know that is uh, something which is a feature of non-inferiority study. And you must say clinically relevant endpoint, a very careful in choice of non-inferiority margin. We talked about assay sensitivity, that means if placebo was there, active control uh, as well as the as the new treatment should have been superior to placebo. This is what we can't observe in non-inferiority trials, so we have to assume that it happened. That is the problem. We also talked about constancy and metrics, which is that uh, you know type of patients, type of interventions, type of outcomes, type of uh, you can say management approach should be constant over the time. If not constant, it creates a problem. And of course, uh, you must have both intention to treat and per protocol analysis. 
Now, these are the recommendations uh, we, of concert says you must uh, state hypothesis in terms of non inferiority, justify the choice of non inferiority margin, describe the results with confidence interval, either difference or ratio. FDA says assess whether active control performed as expected, which is, which is what they call assess sensitivity. Be sure that non-inferiority margin is not larger than the expected difference between active control and placebo. Otherwise, your non-inferiority margin may be going beyond uh, what is uh, worse than placebo. Similarly, European Medicines Agency says, make sure that uh, full data set is available, intention to treat analysis, as well as per protocol analysis have equal importance in non-inferiority trials. And both should show similar results for robust conclusion. And uh, of course, when you are uh, doing non-inferiority and having non-inferiority margin with the expected ben benefit, avoid using composite endpoints. That includes discordant components. That is another issue which we can take up later. Composite endpoints, what problems they have in non-inferiority analysis. But and also perform a sensitivity analysis for missing data. So these are the recommendations by various bodies. I hope you have better understanding now of non-inferiority trials. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, non-blinded trials using non-inferiority non disease? Non-blinded trials, non-inferiority trials may be blinded or unblinded, just as placebo, as uh, uh, stand, uh, trials comparing control treatment without placebo. So, blinding in non-inferiority trials is as important as it is in superiority trials. But as it happens in superiority trials, surgical trials, you can't blind. So sometimes blinding is not possible. But uh, the uh, standard things about concealment, randomization, and uh, minimum losses to follow up is as important in non-inferiority trial as it is in superiority trial. So, so common features I did not discuss. Blinding is uh, blinded outcome assessment is always possible. And it should be done if the outcome is not objective or as objective as mortality. Any other question? Uh, Good evening, sir. Yes. Europe grants permission for the use of a drug uh, because of yeah. the way they provide guideline. Then the, do the US counterparts need to redo the trial? How does it act, sir, practically? Uh, can you repeat your question? Sir, if a drug is uh, by, based on European guidelines, if it is uh, uh, proven to be non-inferior uh, mm -hmm. and it is used in Europe, but if, then if can, the, can it be used directly in US or do you need to again redo something as per the guidelines <laughs> of FDA? Uh, they are a bit, uh, I think, uh, erratic in this. They always want the trials must have been done in US people as well, but it is not very uh, strict, I think. Uh, if it was done in China or India, they will certainly want a trial there. But if it is Caucasian population, they may sometimes accept, sometimes they insist that this, there should be a trial in USA also. But uh, FDA has also approved uh, drugs with non-inferiority trials. It was not doing so earlier. It was reluctant, more reluctant than European Medicine Agency. But now I think they are changing. Sir, it is always mandatory that we have to do a, a non-inferiority trial uh, before uh, superiority model uh, for showing a new therapeutics or a no treat new treatment is effective than better than the current treatment. You must have a superiority trial before you do a non-inferiority trial in that uh, the active treat control or reference treatment should have been proven efficacious in previous study, which will be a superiority trial. Now, the question is, in the same trial, I think what you are asking is, in the same trial, can we have both superiority and non-inferiority as hypothesis? 
And the answer yes. is yes. Uh, because you don't know, you have a new treatment. Suppose I bring a new treatment for hypertension. I have no idea whether it works better than the standard treatment or it is as good as the standard treatment. Certainly, it should not be inferior to the standard treatment. Otherwise, why will anybody take my drug? So what, when I'm doing this, since I don't know, I don't want to do two trials. So I can uh, combine both non-inferiority and superiority hypothesis. Slightly more sample size will be required, but it is OK. But approach is first you test in the same trial. Trial is only one. First test for non-inferiority. If you satisfy that criterion, if you don't satisfy, then stop there. That means your drug uh, is not even non-inferior. How can it be superior? So forget about doing anything else. But if it satisfies non-inferiority criteria, then you do another test. It is the same trial data, just a statistical test is required for superiority hypothesis testing. And you may find that it, it is superior, not only non-inferior, but superior. You remember that A, B, C, D, which I had shown, it may be actually in the top A, which of course doesn't cross the inferiority boundary, but it also is superior. So you can do both the tests in the same trial. But when it comes to doing a trial, of course, a new trial cannot be uh, straight away designed only for superiority if you don't even have non-inferiority data. That is the uh, way uh, it works. Sir, I just want to have a, a continuation of my previous question. Uh, hmm. when, when the study is uh, non-blinded, apart hmm. from the participants, even the outcome assessors have uh, outcome assessment, for example, uh, it can never be blinded in a case of uh, uh, I mean, in a non-inferiority trial, if the uh, if the radiologist or pathologist knows that it is a non-inferiority trial, how will we avoid bias in assessment? They may not be knowing which treatment the patient was allowed to do, but in terms of assessing outcomes, uh, if, if they just say that every patient has a similar thing, uh, then how do you actually do that? No. Uh... If if uh, they don't know, uh, if they know who is receiving what, then it becomes a problem. But if they don't know who is receiving the new treatment and who is receiving the uh, standard treatment or reference treatment, then introducing bias becomes dif difficult because they so don't they know may, who is receiving. So they may say that every person has some 70% improvement, 70% resolution of uh, lesion. Well, uh, that means you are talking about uh, outcome parameters which are not objective, right? If if yeah. outcome param parameter is not objective, then uh, of course uh, that is why I said that uh, endpoints should be uh, chosen in such a way that there is less room for subjectivity. If there is subject only subjective endpoints are there and people even if they are let's say uh, not knowing which treatment they know they may introduce uh, bias in favor of the new treatment by declaring what you are saying that all are working in a similar fashion but the objective uh, parameter like mortality or stroke uh, i think that will be difficult to yes. uh, change so you you have to have as objective endpoint as possible Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, good evening. Sir, I wanted to ask if some uh, previous uh, randomized trial has already proven the uh, non-inferiority of a new treatment versus the standard treatment, can we design a trial straight away to a superiority trial? Yes, yes, you can do that. Uh, but uh, uh, as you know, even for non-inferiority, the FDA of USA at least insist for two trials uh, before the Modernization Act, which came in 1997, 
standard thing and still most of the time they follow this is that there should be at least two trials independent trials we show a similar finding before they approve something so you can do even non inferiority trial you can do a superiority trial as well yeah in the same uh, as you said in the same uh, trial we can do that yes 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 thank you sir right okay any other question or we those if there are no more questions then thank you very much thank you so much thank you sir good night sir thank you sir good night thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much thanks a lot for attending